And we spoke to you so many times about the movies that you were doing. And this was one you were talking and so passionate about, and you were so grateful that you were getting off the ground. You must be delighted now that it's finally, finally here after it's, such a long time. It's, it's five years since I literally started working on it, so it, it is a, a major relief, and I'm thrilled and really pleased with the results of it actually, because it's it, it, we've stuck to our vision, and that that was the thing that I wanted to do. You know, it was a very definite take on the material, and uh, and we've been able to make that movie. Yeah. I mean, what was it about the? I mean, the material obviously been told a lot of times. This one is much. Uh, much darker and has a very much more serious tone, if you like. I mean, was it important to bring those new elements to the story and kind of expand it in a different way? It, it, it's really the mo most important thing about it is that it's a, a Mowgli-centric story. It's about his journey, his emotional journey. And in many kind of adaptations, uh, there's a sense that he's sort of part of. Well, you focus more on the animals and the antics of the animals, and you kind of lose the thread of them of the of the key element, which is this young boy caught between two worlds. And so. Our version is a very emotionally truthful, um, when we say darker, I suppose it's more meant. Everything, there's no winking at the audience, so everything has consequence and, you know, it is, it is literally about a young boy who, who Rowan plays so brilliantly, um, discovering who he is in a very complex world, or caught between two complex worlds. How difficult was it to bring the characters to life? Because obviously I know the Disney version did it and there's been lots of people trying to do it over the years. I mean, for you and the Imaginarium, how difficult was it to kind of bring those characters to life? And how important was it to have the actors behind it? Uh, look, it's the only way to do it. Because, because you know, going back to the emotion of it, it's a, you need the actors to work with the central character. If you imagine trying to, Paul Rowan, if he had to act against a tennis ball and a stick throughout the 90 days of shooting, it, it's impossible to get that connection. You need top quality actors to play those roles. Plus, the way that we designed the animals was all with the actors in mind and so you can actually see their features you can actually see their expressions and and they are real performances much like you know any of the performance capture work that that I've been involved in over the last two decades so to have an A-list cast come in and deliver what they've delivered is, is amazing really. Uh, just finally I always ask you about Star Wars obviously we've <laughs> seen The Last Jedi and things have changed but I mean do they keep you in the loop as to what's happening and as an actor do you as a fan do you you're still kind of curious oh, as to yeah, what well, happens. I mean, JJ, I, I was, you know, email with JJ, and he's let, he said, let me know how things are going and, and how exciting it all is, and I'm, of course, very keen to see how the, the family's getting on. You know, um, who knows, Snoke might come back. I'm not saying anything. Uh, no, no, I'm only making that up. I'm totally just rumor spreading for the sake of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the news of the news these can days. Happen. Anything can happen. <laughs> how long ago did this start for you, and and did you have to audition, or was it kind of a long process to get involved in the first place? Um, I got involved in this back in 2014 when I was just 10 years old, so that's a long time ago, you're right. But, um, I mean, actually, I think Andy had seen my previous work in Lone Survivor, so uh, he sent over some sides and everything, and I actually performed them uh, for him. So, basically, uh, he was in England and I was in New York, and we communicated through Skype. So, you know, obviously in New York with apartments and everything, space is a little bit of an issue. So my mom is uh, is tilting the camera down so that Annie can direct me through through Skype. And I'm on the ground acting out scenes with my dad, crawling around and everything. So it was really exciting. So, yeah. So there's a lot of uh, visuals involved with this. And I'm sure there's bits where you're acting with, with actors with the, with the stuff on or acting with nothing. I mean, how challenging was that for you as such a young actor? It, it was pretty challenging. I mean, especially with the whole process because... Obviously, I worked with like the primary cast first to for, uh, to capture their performances, and I was there for reference. And I would come back six months later to do to do my stuff. But I mean, it was challenging remembering how like Christian or whoever played it, and playing against playing against someone, some other performance capture actor who we had later for my reference and for the movement. And because everyone plays it differently, and remembering how Christian played it while I across from someone else and keeping my performance organic is, you know, it's a bit challenging, but I think it turned out pretty well. <laughs> and there's obviously, I mean, it's a lot of visuals. It could have quite easily just been voices, but to have right. Christian and Benedict and all those guys as a reference, I mean, that must have been a thrill to be involved with them as well. Yeah, I mean, it's just the, the level of commitment they bring to their roles is just fantastic. And also, I mean, being able to work with them face to face is really incredible. And for you, I mean, what was the biggest kind of physical challenge with this role? I mean, obviously, you know, uh, the most, I mean, uh, the most physical scene is probably the running for me. And that was the most challenging because obviously it's a lot of running on all fours. And I had to do a lot of, uh, a lot of research on how wolves move and also a lot of uh, physical training for, uh, for, the, for how wolves move and how to run on all fours. Working with Dad, uh, I'm sure it was fun, but is he a bit of a taskmaster? I mean, oh, yeah, no, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It, it was, yeah. <laughs> You know, it was great. It was, it was, it was like working with someone who you really know quite well. And uh, some, uh, sometimes, you know, like we couldn't stop laughing. But then sometimes, it, like if if he had to tell me something serious, obviously because I know him very well, he could like get to me because uh, he's my dad. So it was good. 
it's good, yeah. So, I mean, it's a story that he's wanted to tell for a long time. I mean, you must be, as part of the family, must be delighted that he's managed to, to bring it to life in such a great way. Yeah, I am. It's um, It's been a long time. We shot it about five years ago. So, obviously, everything's changed since then. Um, and it, as I said, like, it's a different take to the, to the, to the book. It's, it's more, it's totally close to the book. So uh, it's, it's not going to sing songs. It's, uh, you know, it's for an older audience. Yeah. How, how, how much fun was it playing this character and playing in this, this kind of visual world that your dad's kind of helped create over the years? Yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. It was, um, it was different because I was in a motion capture suit with all the dots on and it was, it was very cool to be in a suit that, you could, that can turn you into a wolf. Um, so yeah, it was different, but it was, it was very cool and exciting. So you're in uh, Kitty Would Be King, which is coming out very, very soon. How, how fun was that experience working with Joe and, and on that amazing project? Yeah, no, Joe's, Joe's an absolutely lovely person. It was, it was great to work with him. And as I said, that's completely different from, from this. But um, yeah, I filmed that in September, so it should be great. Yeah. And for, for sort of young audiences and people of your age, I mean, what can they expect from this particular version of Jungle Book if they've read the story when they were little and watched the Disney movies? Well, I mean, if they've read the Rudyard Kipling book, you know, then it's it's much closer to that than the sort of like more adapted versions. Um, it's it's totally like it's, it's for older audiences and it's a little bit scary, you could say, but not not scary. But you know, uh, obviously, it's a story we've seen and heard many many times. But what was it about Andy's vision that kind of sold you on the project in the first place? Because I was in it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. easy. That's it. <laughs> no, um, Andy's an actor. He's been a friend of mine for like 20 years. And as an actor, when actors direct. Quite often, the central character in their films, it always goes on an emotional roller coaster, right? There's always a real focal point of a film when an actor directs, because actors create that within their own mind when they're creating a character. So there was a great point, a reference point within the film. I think the what they're taking out all the songs and all the numbers allowed it to explore lots of other themes like belonging and the environment and the relationship between man and animals. And it didn't patronise children. It didn't, you know, it was, it's a real heartbreaking film but it's a very redemptive film as well. There's a lot of redemption in it. So that appealed to me as a father and, 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 and as, well, I also know that Andy is the expert, the foremost expert in this kind of work and I wanted to learn how to do it. And if anyone could teach me, it would be Andy. Yeah. How liberating is it to do something like that? I mean, obviously there's, there's vocal work, but this is acting and vocal work all at the same time and there's so much going on. the same. It's, there's no difference between this and any other kind of acting. I, 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 I had no, my approach wasn't any different. My commitment wasn't any different. You can't do it and think, I'll just do it a little bit because the, 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 tech, the CGI technicians will add that. You can't. You've got to commit 100%. And if you commit 100%, it shows. If you didn't, it would show up. Yeah. Uh, you're very busy at the minute. Uh, you've got another film out on Friday, White, White Boy Wick. And then you're yeah, doing White Boy Rick. Hobbs and Shaw as well. I'm doing uh, Vice is coming out at Christmas. Vice. I was going to ask yeah, you about yeah, Vice. Yeah. I mean, uh, all these amazing, very different projects. I mean, it yeah. must be great to, to, to dip your toe in so many different things at the moment. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I love it. I don't know why it's happening like this. I mean, I do try to, I try, one, the one thing I do is I try to make sure that the project I'm doing is completely different to the one I've just done. Because then that keeps a, a kind of sense of diversity. It's very re creatively rewarding. And it's also, it means that your career will have a longevity. Yeah. And the link with this, obviously, Christian Bale, his yeah. advice with you. I mean, yeah. how transformative is he? Because everyone's talking about it as Dick Cheney. Oh, it's incredible. He's incredible as Dick Cheney, he's amazing. You think he's, he's got incredible. awards in a future? Definitely, definitely, yeah. I know you've been friends with Andy for a long time, you've worked together before. What was kind of the initial conversation when he pitched you the idea that he was going to take on this story? Yeah, I mean, we, we talked at length about uh, Mowgli and particularly about finding a language that would work for Mowgli and, and um, you know, musically and, and to try and kind of get a theme that would work for him. So I spent a long time trying to find that and spending, I spent a lot of time kind of playing different ideas to Andy and um, and over time we just kind of evolved evolved the music i mean weirdly we had it was a real luxury to have all this time to kind of work on it you know that delay of four years or whatever it was um has, has been really good for the film i think in a lot of ways so um yeah i've kind of really enjoyed the process i mean i went over to south africa spent time with him there uh, musically supervised some scenes there um, and just kind of over time we found something i think that feels unique in terms of the challenges for you as, a, as a, a music maker and everything, I mean, obviously it's a story we know a lot, but Andy's given a very good take on it, a very different take on it. I mean, what was it about these themes that he was putting into it that kind of spoke to you? I think 
Andy, well, Andy first of all is a, is a great musician himself. He's a really good saxophone player. So he kind of has an awareness of, uh, he's got great musical intuition and he understands how music can work really well with film. Um, there's, a, there's a power to his kind of cine, cinematic mind that, that it's very, I mean, you can hear the music. I mean, it's, you know, it kind of lends itself to an epic kind of score and, um, and the way he thinks. Um, and so because he's very, um, he's kind of, He's great at creating new universes and a visceral kind of savagery in this world, I think, is kind of really very powerful. And, and so it was easy to score, um, given the nature of how strong his work was. Uh, given that obviously it's a mo motion capture film and it's visual effects, I mean, does he let you see what he's working on from the very beginning? Does that kind of help your process in terms of making the music? Yeah, I mean, I saw this film from the storyboard uh, stage, you know, when, when it was just first, um, you know, some, some great drawings on the wall. So, you know, to actually see it all the way through, you know, every single stage, it's been a real pr privilege. And, and um, you know, constantly I've been sent um, new, new images, new cuts of the film, and it's, it's just great the way it's evolved in a natural way. It hasn't felt contrived or a force. It's just constantly been about uh, dialogue and, and, um, and development together as a team. And it really feels like a great team effort guided by a brilliant visionary in, in Andy. A project that you've been on a long, long time. You must be delighted that it's come to fruition finally. Yeah, yeah. well, I was very keen to do it before I was put in a box. But yeah, no, it's great. And, and it's been worth every second of it because when you have a lot of time to make a film, you make it very well. And uh, so, yeah, it's been great and it's very exciting. We're sort of going around the world, seeing audiences everywhere, love it. In you know, we started off in India and we've been all over the place. So it's great that we're back in London. But as, a, as a producer, I mean, how do you, how, what's your opinion on kind of the Netflix model? I mean, obviously they're, they're making a lot of original content. They're giving a platform to a lot of films that maybe yeah. we, maybe we'll get in the cinema. I mean, how have you felt that they've kind of handled this movie and how well, delighted are you that there's totally absolutely brilliantly and what's fantastic is that you know that your film is going to be watched by more people on Netflix than it would ever have done had it had a sort of you know more of a classic theatrical release and for us it's the best of all worlds it's in the cinemas for a bit and then it's on uh, you know it's on a it's on a big screen in your sitting room um, and as long as people don't watch it on their phone too much um, it's good, and I think it's a, I think it's a great model, and it's here, and we we at the Imaginarium where we're very, you know, forward-looking, um, hopefully sort of technologically uh, together people. We think it's just great, we're really exciting. And I guess it's testament to this movie as well to Andy's kind of drive and determination that he was so keen to not just tell the story but tell it in this particular way. I mean, it must have been yeah. great to, to work with him and see him again finally come yes, to fruition. I was here. brought up on these stories, and, and my grandmother used to read them to me, and so I I know how savage and wild they are and then to be able to be true to Kipling's vision of the savagery and the wildness and the and the kind of uh, oddness of life in the jungle when you're telling a story about a boy who's brought up by wolves you know the unsanitized version for me is the best version and this is the one that's true to Kipling which is great. Obviously, I know at the Imaginarium you've got loads of stuff going on. I mean, have you, have you, has the dust settled with this one now and you're on to the next thing or have you yeah, just got yeah, lots yeah. of things no, going we've, on? We've, we've got <clears throat> lots of things going on, and, but it's great to just pause and sit in the cinema. And it's one of those cinema, in one of those movies where you go, I've no idea how we did that. I mean, either technically, technologically or, you know, emotionally. I don't know how we did it, but so it's great. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? Yeah, it is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!